dear learners welcome to our nptel course on science communication research productivity and data analytics using open source software today i am going to cover introduction and application of bibliometrics and laws of scientometrics in the mapping of science communication the basic objective of this session is to understand science communication we'll be discussing what science communication is why do we need different metrics for measuring science communication after that we'll be discussing the bibliometrics its introduction and applications then we'll move introduction to scientometrics its applications and we'll be covering the different laws of scientometrics we'll be discussing the different applications of scientometrics also as we know that science is systematic gathering of knowledge when we say systematic that means science is something which happens in very systematic way it does not happen in haphazard way it does not happen in random way we are getting the knowledge scientific knowledge in systematic fashion in systematic way science deals with organizing and condensing knowledge into laws and theories and the most important thing is that these laws and theories are universally applicable and this can be tested another important thing about science is that it is empirical it's objective rational and progressive when we say about progressive that means science is not constant there is progress in each and every domain of science and scientific knowledge is basically deals in the progress which happens in the different domains of science as we already said the approach of science is always systematic when we say science communication so science communication is basically is a process of transferring scientific knowledge and discovery to diverse audience in an engaging and relevant manner in their easy understanding that means what you see here in case of science communication when we are transferring the knowledge of science of course there would be the different stakeholder and science communication should be in such a way that it can reach to the diverse audience in such a manner that it should be engaging it should be relevant to them it should be such a way that they can understand the thing and they based on that they can make their own perspective it's about communicating science and building bridges between people involved in scientific research and different group of public you see there are two group of people one who are doing actual science that means they are at the production end of the science they are producing scientific knowledge and the second group of people is those who are at receiver end those who receive the communication who receive the scientific knowledge that scientific knowledge should be delivered to the receiving people in such a way that it should be transparent it should be easily understandable it should be in proper way it should be in the language which can easily understandable by the people science communication is not just communicating the science science communication is very important to build the opinion of the people science communication is very important to make the policy of the government for example we see people make their own opinion based on what they listen from mass media from social media from the journal article from the newspaper 
and other sources. We can take the example of uh, let us genetically mod modified crops. Now based on the news what they received from the different sources, people build their opinion and this opinion is very important for the, for the progress of the society. Hence, the objective of science communication is to communicate the existing as well as the new knowledge accurately and clearly. Now, the question comes, why do we need science communication? What is the basic need of science communication? You see, science is very vast, it is not limited to one subject or one domain, it is not limited to one field of study. There are various factors which involved in different subject areas and discipline. Hence acceptance of scientific information varies. You see, science is ever growing, science is multifaceted, science is multidisciplinary, there are various disciplines and areas of science. Hence, the proper communication of the result of those area and discipline is very much required. So, that people understand the relation between the di different domain of science and they can take proper opinion and intelligent opinion. You see, science has grown tremendously over uh, a period of time. There is development in science and technology, there is development in uh, uh, research institutions, there is growth in engineering and technology institutions. All these factors led to growth of science. Hence, the result coming out from this growth should be delivered to the people in such a way that the common people can understand it, hence science communication is very much required. Nowadays, people are making opinion based on the science communication, what they read, what they get information from the mass media, from the social media, from the different sources of the science communication. You can easily say the example of uh, artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence is a buzz word. We all are worried about uh, how artificial intelligence are going to play a role in the future, how artificial intelligence is going to affect our day to day life. Important and a uh, good piece of study which can understand by different people would be a good source to make the opinion about artificial intelligence. Hence, since artificial intelligence is not related to one facet, it is related to computer also, it is related to other domain of the study also, hence it is required that proper information should come to the people to make their opinion. In science communication, there is involvement of wide range of stakeholders. You see, there are different stakeholders and some who does not know at all. As we know that we all, most of us study science at our school level. When we grow up, then our knowledge of science is limited. Even those who are practicing science, they are master in their domain, but they do not have knowledge of every domains. Hence, communicating the scientific knowledge to different stakeholders like administrator, policy makers and many other is required, their need would be different. For the example, if a person is engaging in science, he or she may master of his or her field, but it is not necessary that every domain the person knows. Hence, if we are going to communicate science to the person, the same piece of information would have different opinion for a common man and the person who are engaged in science. 
the same piece of communication would have different perspective for the people who are administrator or who are policy maker. Hence, we know that there are different stakeholders and to meet the need of those stakeholders, we need science communication and that science communication should be such a way that the need of different stakeholder can be met. Now, what are the different key aspects of science communication? We see, we have already seen key what is science communication, how science communication is important, how science is multifaceted how there are different stakeholders in science communication. Now, questions come, what are the different key aspects of science communication? One of the most important aspect of science communication is disseminating of scientific knowledge. The basic of science communication is to disseminate the scientific knowledge. It is an engagement and dialogue between the provider and recipient. It is not only one way process, it is not like that that you say what you want to say and other people are not doing anything. Other people are building their opinion based on the communication which the person is receiving from. Another aspect of science communication is accessibility and clarity. Oh, science communication should be accessible to all, it should be clear, there should be no opaque. It should not be opaque in nature, crystal clear information should be there so that it help people to make their opinion, to build their opinion and to use science in their day to day life. Because if there is correct information, if there is clear information, if there is clarity information, then it will build trust and confidence. And ultimately, science communication is also required for the promoting of scientific literacy because I have already mentioned that uh, there are different stakeholders from the common man the, to the person who knows about the science, the layman, the policy maker, the uh, administrator. Hence, for the promoting of scientific literacy, we need science communication and it impact on science policy. So, these are the different aspects of science communication. Now, question comes, what is the importance, why science communication is very much important to us? Science communication is bridge between science and society. You know, there is a development in every aspect of science, there is a development in research and technology. There are various institutions which are engaged in research and development policy, they are doing research, but unless and until the research of the institution, the research of the entity not conveyed to the society, it is not possible for the society to come to know about what is happening. Hence, science communication is very much important to bridge to act as a bridge between science and society. It is also important in the personal and professional arena of our life. You see, in our personal life, in our professional life, we take various decisions. It is very important that our decision should not be biased. Our decision should be based on facts, whatever we have. Hence, here science communication plays a very important role to make unbiased decision, to make logical decision. Hence, it is very important to develop our personal as well as professional arena. Science communication also important to learn people about science. Science communication is important because people come to know about science, people come to know about the development of the science and they debate over the development in their life. They make their own opinion based on the information whatever they have. That is the very important aspect of science communication. 
Science communication is very, very much important for public engagement and support. Science communication is very much important for public engagement and support because it bridges the gap between scientific research and the public allowing everyone to engage with and benefit from the scientific advancement. You see science is basically act for the betterment of the society and that betterment can be conveyed to the society in form of science communication. Hence, with science communication there is public engagement, there is public support and individual text informed decision. Now, science communication is also very much required to addressing misinformation. You see, now there is information overload information explosion everywhere there is ledura of information we are finding plenty of information everywhere it is very tough for us to find out the authentic and accurate information here the role of science communication is very much important science communication handle the problem of misinformation it provide us the right information at the right time to take the right decision. Hence, to avoid misinformation, to, to help the people in taking right decision in their personal and professional life, science communication is very much important. Hence, we need science communication so that people think critically, people avoid misinformation, people avoid fake information. Science communication also have policy impact. You see, there are various policies which are impacted by science communication, proper science communication. For the example, if government want to make any policy, people have the knowledge about the area in which government want to make the policy, any particular scientific policy, then there would be a rational debate because people know about the area where the government or any organization want to make any particular policy. Hence, people can influence the policy maker. There would be influence on the policy decision and it helps in making evidence based policy on the various burning topics. Since the people will have the knowledge of the topic with the information of proper science communication, hence it would helpful in making an evidence based science policy. This is one of the important way by which science communication build the opinion among the people and help in making informative. There are various uh, reasons for the publication, but one of the most important is to uh, spread scientific finding. Scientific findings can only be spread by publication. If there is no publication, it is not possible for, for people, it is not possible for the citizen to know about what is happening. Hence, to spread scientific finding, publication is required and that publication can be in various forms. This can be a journal article, it can be published in proceedings, it can be published in mass media like newspaper magazine and other mass media channels, all this basically spread scientific knowledge. Hence, to spread scientific knowledge publication is required. Another important thing for the publication is to protect intellectuals. When we talk about intellectual, that means when any scientific development happen, 
सम वन कंट्रीब्यूट फॉर डैट डेवलपमेंट अ साइंटिस्ट अ रिसर्चर कंट्रीब्यूट फॉर डैट डेवलपमेंट नाउ डैट डेवलपमेंट that particular invention that particular discovery that particular news is the intellectual output of the person hence the person wants to protect his or her intellectual output that protection can be granted in the different form like patent and other hence to protect intellectual output publication is required and to gain fame when we talk about gaining fame that means we know we all are human being we all want to get known by other people if we are doing something if a scientist is doing something if a researcher is doing something then it his or her desire to people know about that uh, invention that uh, particular discovery that particular piece of uh, news hence for getting for gaining fame publication uh, most of the scientist publish it hence we can say that scientist make their work available to public and they also as access the work of their peers it's not only one way communication it's not only that uh, a scientist is publishing a scientist is publishing but at the same time the scientist is accessing the work of other scientist it helps the scientist to broaden their knowledge because as uh, i have already told that science is progressive it's not constant and that progress can only be possible when there is two way communication now there was a logan wilson uh, he in 1932 logan wilson used the term publish or perish he used the term publish or perish as the term as the phrase indicates it says that any scientific outcome should be published a scientist should be published otherwise the knowledge would be in silo it would be perish the knowledge won't be available to different people the knowledge won't be available for discussion knowledge won't be available for the growth hence publish and perish concept given by logan wilson in 1932 is very much required for the growth of science the growth of science can only be possible if there is publication why is the publication is necessary we have already covered some of the factors which are required for the publication hence publication is very much required in 1967 derek john d sola price he suggested that research findings should be published he said nation publish or perish that means the prosperity of a nation depends upon publication how much the nation publish is very much required for the growth of science is very much required for the growth of the nation that publication should be happen uh uh price was a physicist and a historian of science and he was credited as the father of scientometrics hence the contribution of price direct john d sola price is very important in science communication in scientometrics now price work primarily focus on 
quantitative analysis of scientific publication. And when you talk about the quantitative analysis of scientific publication, the scientific publication which can be measured, there are two ways of measurement, one is quantitative, other is qualitative. Price work is basically for the quantitative analysis and in later part of my lecture, I will be discussing different quantitative technique which can be used for the measurement of science. Now, you see since the solar price has mentioned that science communication should be measurable. Now, question comes what is the need for the matrix in science communication? Why do you need matrix different measurements in science communication? The first important thing for matrix is to get the quantitative and qualitative evaluation. We need matrix in science communication to find out to evaluate both quantitatively and qualitatively. We need to evaluate science communication in respect of quantity and quality. Hence, we need matrix in science communication. Another important thing for need of matrix in science communication is understanding audience engagement. You know that there are different types of audience are engaged. We have already seen that common man, policy maker, scientist, administrator, there are different people who are engaging in science. Some of them are producing science, some of them are actually using science in their in their day to day work. To engage to understand the audience engagement, how they are using it. For example, a scientist is using an article in writing another article in the form of citation. A common man is using that piece of information to take any logical decision. An administrator take that piece of article for another purpose. Hence, to understanding the audience engagement, we need science communication. Science communication is very much important to demonstrate impact and value. If you are measuring science communication, then we demonstrate how impactful that particular piece of research is. Hence, to demonstrate the impact and value of that piece of research, we need the measurement of science. Science measurement is matrix are also needed for accountability and transparency. Based on the quantitative result, there would be transparency among the different pieces of science communication, hence is required. Matrix are also needed for resource allocation because based on the matrix, we can find out which area of science need funds, where there is more chances for research, which area is lagging behind a particular area. Hence, for all these things, for allocation of funds, science communication matrix are very much required. Now, since science is multifaceted, having different stakeholders, hence it is not possible for a single matrix to measure the various aspects of science communication. Hence, there are need for different matrices to measure science communication, because no single matrix can capture all aspects of impact and values of science communication. Hence, we need different matrix. Different matrix provide different insights, is provide various dimensions. 
for the example citation impact uh, uh, societal relevant collaboration network all these are measured with the help of different metrics there is need for more than one matrix to measure science communication because more than one matrix can judicially man measure the different aspects of science communication using a combination of matrix enable a more comprehensive and value added evaluation of research if you are using different matrix if you are not uh, fixing ourselves with one matrix then it's possible that combination of matrix can be used to make the measurement of science for communication more fruitful using various matrix enable a more comprehensive study of science communication you see it allows a tailored communication and measurement approach to meet the specific requirement of the diverse audience different matrix can satisfy the need of different audience hence we need different matrix there are different stakeholders their needs are different hence we need different matrix or various matrix to measure science communication is also needed different matrix are also needed uh, to background understanding of different domain of science and also the methodological ranges because you see as we seen science is spreading is multidisciplinary is multifaceted there would be the different met methodological process there would be the different methodological ranges to cover all these uh, aspect we need different matrix so that various aspects of science communication can be measured and can be covered different matrix is also needed for balance assessment and transparent evaluation hence we can say different matrix in science communication offer a more comprehensive contextual and balanced understanding of science communication it help to judge the research impact and quality they cater the needs of diverse stakeholder and being a multidisciplinary nature multifaceted nature it cater the need of science also it can cover different aspects of science also now we have covered the need of the different matrices now a milestone achieved in 1963 when eugen garfield founded science citation index sci this is very important aspect in measuring of science this science citation index help to measure science using quantitative and objective methods basically when eugen garfield developed science citation index in 1963 his aim was to use citation analysis as a legitimate and practical tool for evaluation of scientific production he wanted to evaluate scientific production by using citation analysis we'll be discussing what citation analysis i think you uh, might have uh, learn about different uh, aspects in your uh, previous uh, lectures we are not going to detail of about that but citation analysis is a tool is a way by which we can measure the impact of a researcher when eugen garfield founded this in 1963 his aim was to use citation analysis as a legitimate and practical tool for the evaluation of scientific productivity 
and this was the most important step happened in science communication. Then in 1969, Pritchard coined the term bibliometrics. Pritchard was a British librarian and information scientist and his uh, study was focused basically on publication, citation analysis and the measurement of citation research output. And in 1969, Pritchard published an article. The title of the article was a statistical bibliography or bibliometrics in the journal of documentation. And in this particular article, he introduced and defined the term bibliometrics. As we know, biblio means book, metrics means measurement, but Pritchard defined this term, it was something broader in aspect. He defined bibliometrics as the application of mathematical and statistical method to books and other means of communication. He was not confined himself to books only, but his definition of bibliometrics covers the application of mathematical and statistical tool to measure the quantity of information in books and other means of communication. And uh, basically it was the preacher's work uh, which laid down the foundation of the development of bibliometrics as a distinct field within the library and information science. In library information science, bibliometrics is, an, is a very important field. And it was the work of Pritchard which laid down the foundation of this particular uh, matrix, bibliometrics. Now, when we come to know about bibliometrics, the bibliometrics is nothing but uh, it is a uh, quantity method to study and analyze publication and their impact we use a statistics, bibliometrics is a, a statistical method of studying and analyzing publication and its impact. It involves measuring and analyzing various aspects of a scholarly literature such as publication, citation, author, journal, institution, to gain insight into the pattern trend. That means, bibliometrics is not uh, confined only to the information which are in the form of books, but the area of bibliometric is quite large, is quite wide. It covers a scholarly literature in the form of publication, citation, author, journal, institution and all these help to get insight about the happening in that particular domain in that particular field. Bibliometrics primarily focus on a statistical analysis of bibliographic data. That means, when we talk about bibliometrics, it focus on a statistical analysis of bibliographic data. There are various types of bibliographic data and with the help of bibliometrics, we do the statistical analysis of that data, its significance, its influence, its quality, all these aspects of the data are covered in bibliometrics, in a scope of bibliometrics. Some of the key aspects used in bibliometrics are publication count. I am not going to discuss in detail, but I am just going to give a glimpse of it, how they work, what they are and what their scope in bibliometrics. When you say about the publication count, as the name indicate is counting the publication and publication can be counted by the name of the author, 
uh, by name of the institution by the name of the country hence when we talk about publication count that means it provides an insight it is provide an overview about the publication of the country or publication by uh, an particular author or publication of that particular institute. For the example, you see I have taken this uh, data from Scopus and here you see the affiliation name is Indian Institute of Technology Delhi and the range is from 1952 to 2024. That means, if we want to count the total number of publications using a Scopus database between 1952 to 2024 for Indian Institute of Technology Delhi, we found that there are 30,658 documents. This is not the complete number. This number is given by one database that is Scopus. This number can vary because all the publications of IIT Delhi might not be indexed in Scopus. But you see, using this database, we find out that what is the output of Indian Institute of Technology within a, a period of time, within a range of time. This we, we can measure it. That means, we are measuring the output of an institution quantitatively. If we are taking the affiliation country as India, that means, if we are taking country as India and find out what is the total publication from India indexed in a Scopus in the range of 1866 to 2025, then we come to know more than 3.2 million documents published from India during this particular period range and which are indexed in Scopus. That means, what we are doing as a country, we are analyzing the output of India, output of India within a particular period. This document would not be the same number, it, it would be higher because all the document published from India during this period is not covered under Scopus. You see, the same publication count, if you want to analyze how they are increasing year by year, you see this graph, that means it reaches at a peak, it is going upward from 1866 to 2026 and then in a particular year it reaches to its peak and then again coming down, coming up. That means, we are analyzing the productivity, the publication count, the scientific productivity of a country. This is bibliometric analysis in form of publication count. If you want to see that out of 3.2 million document, whatever we more than 3.2 million document which we found using a Scopus database. Who is the most productive author? That means, who has written the most number of articles? Then we come to know there is an author by the name of Singh B. And the article written by this author is approximately 2400 is approx 2400 here. So, that means, what we are quantitatively analyzing the publication of that country with the help of a database Scopus. 
if we want to further analyze this and we want to find out uh, under which subject domain or as a country affiliation of India, then we come to know if we want to further analyze and find out publication count or publication document by subject area, then we see the share of engineering is most followed by medicine. Hence, during the year, the largest number of article published in field of engineering followed by medicine and so on. So, that means what we are doing? We are analyzing the publication count of an institute. We are finding the most prolific author, we are finding the author who have written the maximum number of articles, we are finding the subject which are producing maximum number of uh, documents. That means, we are quantitatively analyzing the different aspects of publication count using bibliometrics. This is the technique of bibliometrics. Another aspect of bibliometrics is citation analysis. When we talk about citation analysis, citation analysis is examining the citation within a scholarly publication to understand the relationship between works, identify influential article and author and measure impact of the research. If we use the same database that is Scopus and Without earlier result of uh, 3.2 million article from India, if we try to find that which article has maximum number of citation, then we come to know there is an article published in IEEE transaction on evolutionary computation published in year 2022 received more than 35,000 citations. That means, we are analyzing the citation received by an article over the period of time using bibliometrics. Another is publication count. If you want to see out of 3.2 million publication, whatever we found earlier, what are the different types of publication appear? Then we come to know the share of articles is 70 percent, followed by conference proceeding. Hence, using bibliometrics, we are analyzing the types of document which appear in different subject area in different form of communication in a Scopus database during the particular period of time. If you want to see the growth of document year by year, documents per year by source, then we come to know there is AIP conference proceeding which contributes the maximum number of documents which is approximately 30,000 over the range of time. Hence, we analyzing using bibliometrics that what are the different types of document produced by a country year by year. Similarly, we can do author analysis, we can investigate the productivity of author, we can investigate the collaboration of author, whether author is working in isolate or is a single author or which other country the author is collaborating with, what is the impact 
uh, of the citation received by the author, how many citations are received by the author during the period of time, all this can be done using bibliometrics uh, over a period of time. For the example, if we want to find out which author from India has received the maximum number of citation, then we come to know the author Singh B and Al Haddad K Chandra A received approximately 2000 citation for the article published in IEEE transaction on industrial electronics. If you want to analyze the publication of the author of India, we already seen that Singh B is the most prominent author from India in our earlier slide. Now, if we want to limit ourselves to Singh B only in a Scopus database and using affiliation country as India, we can find that he received approximately 2000 citation for his article over the period of time. Similarly, journal analysis can be done based on the impact factor, citation pattern, in which uh, quartile the journal is, uh, what the publication policy, all these are the part of uh, bibliometrics. For the example, using uh, a Scopus database, if you want to find out uh, which is the journal which having the highest percentile then we come to know there is a journal called this particular journal CA a cancer journal of clinicians having the highest percentile of 99 percent having the citation of approximately 70,000 and this percentage citation is 94. That means what? We are analyzing the journal based on the different factors and all these are done using bibliometrics. Some other aspects and techniques used for bibliometrics are co-citation analysis, bibliographic coupling and the various other matrices. I am not going to explain all these things. You might have learned about all these in detail in your previous lectures or incoming lecture. Now, question comes, if bibliometrics is so important, then what is the different applications of bibliometrics? Bibliometrics is very much uh, required for research evaluation. We have already seen how bibliometrics help us in finding the most prolific author, the finding the article which received the maximum number of citations to find out the journals which are at the highest percentile. Hence, bibliometrics is very much required for research evaluation. It is widely used for evaluating the research and the quality of research. Bibliometric is also used for journal ranking based on their impact factor, based on their influence, based on their specific field in which quartile they are falling with. Hence, bibliometrics is used to give the ranking of the journal, they are used for the journal ranking. Bibliometrics is also used for research trend analysis. I have already explained in my previous slides how bibliometrics is used in using a Scopus data, how different subject fields are associated for a particular uh, area of growth. Hence, bibliometrics is used for the analysis in the research trend, which particular area is growing, which particular area is receiving the maximum number of citation, which particular area is not uh, sought after or maximum sought after among the researcher. All these uh, things are needed for 
analysis and it's very important for the development of science. Hence, bibliometrics is used for the research uh, trend analysis. The bibliometrics is also help in research collaboration. It's help in network. With bibliometrics, we come to know which particular scientist or which particular researcher is working in that domain of uh, research, what the area they are working with, which, which are the different networks, which are the different agencies which they are collaborating with. So by that way, bibliometrics is used for the research collaboration. Bibliometrics is also used for the funding decision because if a particular funder or a government want to fund, then with the help of bibliometrics, the government or the funder come to know which are the trending area, which area there is a need of fund, which area there is need of development. Hence, it is important to use bibliometrics in funding decision and it help the funder to take informed decision based on what the quantitative data we have, what the data we available with. A funder can take informed decision based on the data available. Bibliometrics is also used for science policy and planning. Science policy and planning is very much important for the progress of any country. Now, with the help of bibliometrics, the planner, the policy maker comes to know that with the help of bibliometrics, the planner and policy maker, makers come to know which area they need to give more strength, which area there is development is needed. Hence, for science planning and policy, bibliometric is very much needed. Bibliometric is also needed for the patent analysis for getting the intellectual output of a particular country or a particular research organization or a particular researcher. Thanks for your patience hearing. Thank you.